Today we're going to hear about the blindest king of Israel, and also the last. His name was Zedekiah. He would have his eyes taken out by the king of Babylon. But even when he had his eyes, he was still blind. You remember that in our last lesson we talked about three hard-hearted kings. Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin. Hard to tell them apart, right? Well, we learned we didn't really need to because they were all hard-hearted fools who wouldn't listen to God calling on them to repent. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God told them they would be removed as kings and Jerusalem destroyed if they kept worshiping other gods. None of them would listen, and all three were removed as king. After them, Zedekiah became king. Do you think he learned from what had happened to the three kings before him? He did not. Like those three kings before him, he did not turn from his evil ways. He wanted to continue in those evil ways, so he did not listen when God called him to repent. And he fooled himself into thinking that what God had done to Jehoahaz and Jehoiakim and Jehoiachin wouldn't happen to him. That's how he was blind even while his eyes worked. That's called self-blindness. Blinding yourself to something because you don't want to see it. Zedekiah was blinding himself to his and Judah's sin and the punishment God would send because of it. Soon after Zedekiah became king, God told Jeremiah to make a yoke and put it around his own neck. A yoke is what they put on an ox or a horse to haul a cart or a plow. Jeremiah was to put this yoke on his own neck and proclaim to Zedekiah and the people of Judah that for their sins God would give them into the hands of the king of Babylon. As Jeremiah was wearing a yoke, the king of Babylon would put a yoke on Zedekiah's neck and the neck of all the people of Judah. The king of Babylon would make them all his servants and take them away. Jeremiah also told the king to not listen to the people who said that God would give them victory over Babylon. Jeremiah warned Judah and the king if they rebelled against the king of Babylon, they would be killed and the city destroyed. The people did not like hearing this. They didn't want to think they were sinners and didn't want to think Babylon would defeat them again. So Zedekiah and the people listened to false prophets who told them what they wanted to hear. Told them that Babylon would be destroyed within two years. So Zedekiah and Judah rebelled against Babylon. And more importantly, they rebelled against God. When the Babylonian army came and surrounded the city as God had foretold, King Zedekiah asked Jeremiah to pray for the city. Jeremiah told Zedekiah that the Babylonians would take the city and burn it to the ground because they had rebelled against the Lord. Jeremiah also told Zedekiah that they should go out and surrender to the Babylonians. If they did that, they would live and the city wouldn't be destroyed. Once again, the people didn't like hearing that, so they imprisoned Jeremiah and then they threw him down a well. The well was dry, but the bottom was full of mud, so Jeremiah sank down into the mud. Later, Zedekiah had Jeremiah pulled out from the well. Things were pretty bad in the city by that time. They had been besieged for two years. There was no food left in the city. Zedekiah asked Jeremiah what would happen. Jeremiah asked Zedekiah, If I tell you, will you put me to death? Zedekiah promised he wouldn't. Jeremiah also said, If I tell you, you will not listen. But thus says the Lord, If you surrender to the king of Babylon, your life will be spared and the city will be spared. But if you do not surrender, this city and you will be destroyed. Zedekiah was still blind. He did not listen. He was blind to what the Lord had done to Jehoiahaz and Jehoiakim and Jehoiachin. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah's reign, in the fourth month on the ninth day, a breach was made in the wall of Jerusalem by the Babylonian army. When Zedekiah and the leaders of Judah saw it, they fled from the city by a secret way. But the Babylonian army pursued them and caught them in the plains of Jericho. And the king of Babylon killed Zedekiah's son before his eyes, and then put out Zedekiah's eyes. The last things he saw was his own family dead. Then the Babylonians burnt the city of Jerusalem and tore down its walls and carried the people who were left to Babylon, as God had foretold, 
because they were hard-hearted and would not listen to the Lord. Thus came an end to the earthly kings of Israel. Blind Zedekiah was the last. But even in the darkest hour, they could still have hope. Through Jeremiah, God promised, Jeremiah 33, 14-16, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will perform the good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause to grow up to David a shoot of righteousness. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called the Lord our righteousness. The might of the kings of Judah was cut off like a mighty tree is cut down and its stump left. But sometimes when you cut down a tree, a shoot grows up from the roots. Israel would never have an earthly king of the line of David again, but God would give them something better from the line of David. From the ruin of the house of David, God would cause to rise up a shoot, someone who would be Israel's and our righteousness. Jeremiah was, of course, talking about Jesus. Jesus would not come to this world to be an earthly king, but our heavenly king. He would come to bring forgiveness to Israel and to us. That is why we say, the Lord is our righteousness. He is our king of salvation. He is not a king of this earth, but the king of heaven who has given us heaven. And so our passage of the day is from Jeremiah 33, verse 16. In those days, speaking about when Jesus came to this world to live for us and to die for us, in those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Can you say it with me? In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called the Lord our righteousness.